What's up, everybody? This is David with Average Joe Investing, and I know it's been a while since we talked about fantasy football, and honestly, that's just because we had a couple of teams drop out relatively early, so I really didn't think it would be that entertaining to show 130 to 70 point blowouts. But with that being said, all of the playoff standings are finally set. We're down to four teams per league, so let's run through these one more time. We'll show you guys the four teams that made the playoffs, as well as our opening bracket. So go ahead in the comment section down below, tell me who you think is going to win each one. I'll show you guys the four teams that made it in each league as well as their teams. So thank you again so much for everybody who joined in and actually playing fantasy football this year. If you want to join in next year, I'll probably do it a little bit differently. I might do a couple of year-long seasons like this, but I might also do something like DraftKings where it's week by week. That way you can kind of drop in and out as you feel like it. But without further ado, let's jump right in and take a look at subscriber one and see who made the playoffs. Taking a look at the standings for subscriber one, and as you guys can see right off here at the top, Farm Beats is going to finish the league in number one this year, and take a look at that points four. I was second in the league for points four, and he beat me by over 200 points. That's absolutely massive, hasn't lost a game since week two, so he's definitely the guy to beat in this league. Going down the rest of the list there, obviously I got the second seed, not so bad, going to make the playoffs here in subscriber one. We got Jory coming in third, and then we got Vance Refrigeration coming in there in fourth. And you'll see that fourth, fifth, and sixth all tied in terms of records, but the way that these standings work is it goes by points four. So if there is a tiebreaker, that tiebreaker is broken up by points four. So there we have it. The four teams that are going to make it in are going to be Farm Beats, my team, Jory, and Vance. So let's take a look at the actual playoff tree here. It's just going to be very, very simple. One place four, two place three. So up first, we're going to have Farm Beats versus Vance Refrigeration. Taking a look at their matchup here, and there's only projected difference of four points here. So this is going to be an absolute barn burner. And running down their teams, you're going to see why they both made the playoffs. We have two of the best quarterbacks facing off against each other. Two of the best wide receiver ones on their team facing off against each other. Which is insane to say, because Godwin has Mike Evans on the other side. But he's been incredible this year. Also, we have Christian McCaffrey versus Alvin Kamara, which is another great matchup. A tight end, Travis Kelsey versus Darren Waller, two of the better tight ends this year. The only thing they both have to figure out is going to be their kicker situation. So Dallas's kicker was released this week, so he's going to have to figure out that situation there. And on the other side, we don't have a kicker plugged in just yet. I'm sure they're both going to get that figured out. But running down the rest of their teams here, we have DK Metcalf that might come into play. Kareem Hunt might come into play. So kind of a couple options there. On the other side... I'm not sure that he'll have anything to swap in. Maybe Hunter Henry for Darren Waller, but honestly, I like Waller better in this matchup. You might see Kenyon Drake slide in there, but either way, this is going to be an absolutely incredible matchup here for the number one versus number four seed in Subscriber 1. Taking a look at the other semifinals here for Subscriber 1, it's going to be the number two versus number three seed. That's me versus Jory. And if you take a look at the projections here, this one actually has a decent spread on it. So Jory's definitely the favorite going into this one. Taking a look at his lineup, Ryan Tannehill has been absolutely incredible this year. He's kind of a guy down in uh, Miami. They were kind of like, is he going to be good? Is he not? He's been absolutely fantastic so far in Tennessee. Devontae Adams, obviously Aaron Rodgers' go-to guy there. Chris Carson, probably my favorite running back matchup this week. He's absolutely going to go off. Dalvin Cook, just one of the best running backs in the league right now. Zach Ertz breaks all sorts of records with the receiving. So this is going to be a very, very tough team to beat. On my side here, as you can see, pretty much everybody's questionable. So we got Lamar Jackson, the number one scoring guy in fantasy football. Really have to hope he gets more than the 24 points here against the Jets. I know he's got a little bit of quad issue, but he should beat Michael Vick's record this week. So very, very excited to see that. DJ Chark, honestly, I think nine points is a little low for him. He's been very, very good this year. Julio Jones questionable. Derrick Henry, just absolute beast. Le'Veon Bell is kind of a big question mark. I mean, he just isn't really doing that great there. And Baltimore's defense is better than people give him credit for. And then below that, really, I don't have a lot going on. Jack Doyle, just huge question mark. If I get a touchdown, great. If not, eh, I'm kind of in trouble. Taking a look at the benches, you'll see I am pretty thin here. I had a lot of injuries in this league. A lot of things not going my way. So got a guy down there in IR in on Johnson. Would love to have him. On the other side, we got a couple of defenses. He's probably not going to sub in. And realistically, I think the matchup that you see there on the top is what we're going to get. Jumping over to subscriber two. If we take a look at our final standings here, I actually finished in first place in this league, so 12-2. and two. A little bit lucky there. I do have the most points for, so obviously that's very, very good in terms of trying to get first place. I also have the second least points against, so realistically, I didn't have the toughest matchups. So kind of having that combination of the most points for, the almost the least points against, obviously that's going to project out to a lot of wins here. 
But going down the rest of it, we got Dream Team and Kevin's Notable Team tying with the same record. We do have a lot more points there for the Dream Team. That's why they're going to have the second seed. What you say in slides in there to fourth. Everybody else at least one game back. So no real tiebreakers getting into the playoffs. So our matchup here is going to be me versus what you say in and Dream Team versus Kevin's Notable Team. So up first is going to be the number one versus the number four seed. So that's going to be me taking on what you say in. And again, just a great battle of quarterbacks here. Again, Lamar Jackson, number one scoring quarterback in fantasy football this year. Drew Brees going up against my Indianapolis Colts. Honestly, the Colts have been pretty banged up all year. They're not really the best team. They're not going to make the playoffs. So Drew Brees could absolutely go off there. We got a little bit of Houston going on here. So I got DeAndre Hopkins. He's got Will Fuller. So it all depends on where Deshaun Watson throws that ball. And then just going down the rest of it, you know, there's a reason why both these teams made the playoffs. Joe Mixon has been kind of my hit or miss guy. Lately, he's been really, really good. So hopefully we don't lose it on that guy. And on his side, Cream Hunt has just been incredible coming off the bench this year. Taking a look at the benches, I have Marlon Mack, who realistically coming off the broken hand, probably not going to play him. Again, I like Waller over Hunter Henry, so I'm not going to be making that swap out. So what you see there is probably what I'm going to end up running. On his side, maybe he swaps in Le'Veon Bell if he trusts him. Other than that, maybe Adam Thielen. I mean, he probably drafted that guy really early. Unfortunately, he's questionable. He's been banged up all year. So I think what you see is what you're going to get in this one as well. Taking a look at our number two versus number three seed. And yes, the spread looks relatively decent on this one. But take a look at Kevin's notable team there at wide receiver one. Calvin Ridley did get put on IR. So I imagine he's going to go to the bench here. We have Sterling Shepard who can jump up into that situation. Projected at nine points. That would bring this within a two or three point game. So probably going to be a little bit closer there. A quarterback, probably a few more points going to go to Patrick Mahomes. But then at tight end, realistically, Travis Kelsey could absolutely beat Vance McDonald pretty handily. So really not sure which way this one's going to go. If we get that swap out from Calvin Ridley, bring in anybody from the bench here, I really think this could bounce up to pretty much a 50-50 shot. The other thing I would expect to see on Dream Team, we might see Cooper Cup actually jump up into the starting lineup. And depending on how Devontae Freeman is, maybe we see him bump Emmanuel Sanders. Honestly, I'm not sure about that one. But again, a decent matchup here. It's going to be a lot closer than the projection show. Finally, getting into the big one, the YouTubers League. And as you guys can see here, I actually got the number one seed once again. Underneath me, we got Ryan and Max Shoots Film, both tied there at nine and five. So only one game back. Underneath that, Citizen of the Year is going to beat out JMac Investing by only 35 points. So very, very close. Came down to the last week or so there. And realistically, it was just a matchup of points four. So that's going to put me versus Citizen of the Year and Ryan versus Max Shoots Film. Overall, I'm very, very happy the way this league turned out. I know it's a bunch of YouTubers. They're not necessarily into fantasy football. I believe we had four or five people that never played fantasy football before. So, hey, if you take a look at the records there, everybody from nine and up, all within a couple of games. Berg's Corner never quite got off the bench there. But, you know, who knows? Maybe we got a couple more fantasy football fans. Maybe we have a couple people that just, hey, thanks for having me one year. I'm out. Up first, we're going to have my matchup here against Citizen of the Year. And honestly, I think this is going to be way closer than the projections are showing. Taking a look at his team, Kirk Cousins can absolutely go off. Cooper Cup has put up 20 to 30 points several times this year. So I really think that an 11-point projection is very low, especially playing against Dallas. Dallas is not that great this year. So him and Todd Gurley absolutely going to eat this week. Austin Eckler, I really have to hope that the ball goes to Melvin Gordon a little bit more because he's sitting down there on my bench. So hopefully Austin Eckler doesn't get the ball that much. I think really the only weak part here is going to be Vance McDonald. But what are you going to do? Tight end honestly isn't that deep here. Also, if you take a look at his bench, pretty strong. Cream Hunt down there, Adam Thielen. I know he's questionable. Jordan Howard's had a couple weeks where he just absolutely went off. I mean, he put up like 30 points one week. James Conner, I believe, is coming back this week. So there's a lot of strength here that really isn't showing up in the projected points. On my side, pretty similar team. You've seen a lot of these players. Lamar Jackson... Hopkins is just incredible. Devontae Adams. Derrick Henry has been one of the best running backs in the league this year. Jones can go off at any given time. Not too off many weak points here. Pittsburgh's defense has even been really, really good since they got Micah Fitzpatrick in that trade. Or Minka Fitzpatrick in that trade, sorry. Joey Sly, probably my only weak point there at kicker. I mean, if kicker's my biggest problem, I'm not that worried. My bench is kind of deep in this one. But unfortunately, you cannot play benched players. So A.J. Green, complete waste of a draft pick. He never even played this year. T.Y. Hilton, kind of unfortunately, he went down injured. But to be completely honest with you, when my option is Chris Carson, Devontae Adams, Hopkins, or Hilton, it was really hard to decide who to play every week. So I actually don't mind that hard. They kind of made the decision for me.
Our last matchup of the semifinals here is honestly probably the best matchup of the week. So as you guys can see, both teams went 9-5. and five. Both teams projected to finish within three yards of each other. So this is the one I'm going to be watching. This is going to be the most exciting matchup for me. We have Mahomes versus Wilson. Absolutely incredible. Odell Beckham versus Jarvis Landry. So who gets the ball more in Cleveland this week? It's hilarious the whole way down. There's a lot of these matchups where it's like, man, who's going to get the ball more in this game? Like Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey. That's another one. Who's going to get the ball more in that one? It's going to be very interesting to see what happens here because this is probably the closest matchup we've had all year. Taking a look at the benches here, Cole Beasley, great guy on third down, probably not a guy you want to be playing in the fantasy playoffs. So we're probably not going to see any changes here for Max Schutz film on Ryan's team. I mean, the only one I can really see you arguing here is maybe Will Fuller. The guy put up like a 50-point week. He put up like a 20-point week. But he's just so boomer bust that honestly, I think he has the right players in this week. So I think now both teams are set. You just kind of let it run its course and see what happens. So again, I just want to say one more huge thank you to everybody that played in the leagues this year. It's been an absolute ton of fun to play with you guys. Also, one more just massive thank you to J-Mac Dividend Investing. Honestly, without his help, the YouTubers League would not have happened at all this year. So really, really big thanks there for J-Mac. And I just really can't wait to see what the next two weeks have in store. Let's see if we can bring home three championships. Let's see if we can go three for three in year two of David versus his subscribers and other YouTubers with Average Joe Investing. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for checking it out. I'll see you guys all very soon.